Good morning and welcome back to the Proactive Studio. I'm Jonathan Jackson and joining me now is Imogen Managing Director and CEO, Leslie Chong, and Strategic Advisor, Dr. Yuman Fong, to discuss Professor Fong's expertise and the latest company developments. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. It's uh, nice to see you. Now, Yuman, before we get into uh, the latest company milestones, I was wondering if you could give me uh, just a little bit of a background into yourself and, and the work you're doing with, with Imogen. So uh, my background is I do robotic surgery to, uh, for cancer patients, and uh, and my laboratory work is in designing viruses and cells for human therapy, and so that's where I intersect with uh, Leslie. Uh, Leslie's company, Imogene, has uh, licensed a number of things that we're, we've worked on in the laboratory, and now they're in human trials and very uh, in very exciting times. And I just want to touch on that uh, before we do launch into the news. You have extensive experience in CF33, which is otherwise known as a vaccinia in, in Imogene terms. Uh, can you give me some some insight into, into your work in CF33 and how all of that has, has evolved? Yeah. So CF33 was actually designed and born in my laboratory. And what it is is a virus that's been specifically designed to infect and kill only cancer. And, uh, and it kills cancer by direct infection and lyses of cancer, but it also stimulates the human immune system to recognize cancer as foreign so that many of our immune cells can potentially try to kill the cancer also. So again, very exciting I, I, uh, that I, Leslie and her company has taken this virus forward into human trials. So let's uh, talk about that. Uh, Leslie, you dosed the first uh, patient in the trial for for uh, bile tract cancer patients uh, using vaccinia. So talk, talk me through the trial and the expectations there. That's right. So the vaccinia study is a phase one study. It's a dose binding study whereby what that means is we want to get the right dose to take into future studies, be it phase two or phase three. You need to adjust safety and the right amount of dose to affect patients' tumor. And when human just said lice, that's exactly what happened with our bile tract cancer patients. The, the virus went in, replicated, burst the cell, lysed the cell, killing that tumor cells, and then recruited your immune system to it. So this patient has been going on for nearly two years without any tumor growth, but also nearly about a year uh, without getting any medicine because we've switched on their immune system. They've recruited the immune, their own immunity to, to do away with their own cancer. So that's why I think the safety is beautiful. And uh, we're excited about going into this particular unmet need because bile tract cancer doesn't have a lot of effective medicine out there. And we already have the FDA fast tracks uh, when we need to go fast in terms of making this into a drug. So I'm quite excited about that. And as well as dose escalating to one of the highest doses in that study. So we're, we've got lots of things going on in that study. It's almost like five studies in one in one protocol where we have a bile tract cancer study happening we've got four different arms of dose escalation happening so that is going like gangbusters um so going really well and then we also announced another one of of humans invention which is on carlytics in an oasis study this is a very important virus because it not only creates and replicates in solid tumors and solid tumors only, it also shuttles up or flags that particular solid tumor for a very powerful CD19 target product like Blincido or Yescardo or other things in the market to come and find that solid tumor where it hadn't been seen before. So that's why it's so revolutionary and it could be a paradigm shift uh, in how we treat cancer. And I just want to touch on that a little bit. That 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 Oncolytics trial, it's part of a broader Oasis trial. Can you just, uh, uh, again, remind us of, of what this trial actually is? Jonathan, the, what we have been finding with our viruses is that not only does it directly kill cancer, it actually simulates an immune system. 
and in a different kind of cancers, blood cancers, uh, leukemias and lymphomas, this type of uh, 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 stimulating the host's own immune system to kill cancer has been very successful because many of the leukemias and lymphomas have a protein called CD19 on the cell surface. And uh, uh, so uh, pharma uh, big pharmaceutical companies have made many medicines targeting those that particular protein. In solid tumors, which is 90% of cancers, uh, in, uh, and, and they consist of things like brain cancer and breast cancer and colon cancer and lung cancer, we don't have such a protein that we can truly target. And that's because most of the proteins we've been trying to target in cancer also exist in normal tissues. So we can't give very much of a dose without hurting the human being. Since our virus clearly infects cancer very well at a very small dose and only infects cancer, we asked, can we just use this virus to go put CD19 on any solid tumor? Then suddenly all those medicines that have been already created for lymphomas and leukemias can be used for this. And uh, so in animal studies, we've been able to cure many, many different kinds of cancers that way. And now we're in human trials. And so where we are is that we've now given this particular virus that carries a CD19 tag to uh, patients. And now we are just dose the first patient with a combination of using the virus as well as a drug designed for CD19, Lincido. And uh, so if you think about it, the way we now fight wars is that we not only go and send in bombs uh, and just spray the, the area, we now go tag uh, uh, targets for uh, missiles and smart bombs to come in and, and, and kill uh, the enemy. That's what we're doing for cancer. We're now taking our virus that only tags cancer. And uh, not only are we directly killing cancer that way, we're now asking it to tag the cancer so that all those drugs that target CD19 can come in and help in killing the cancer. So that's where we are. And the uh, first patient dose with the combination, very excited to see where it goes. And uh, but But it is more than just laboratory now, it is human. That's a great explanation, uh, Yuman. Uh, so there's huge potential here for both vaccinia and oncolytics uh, to, to, to actually really make an impact in, in, in treating cancer. Yes, very excited about it. And so again, for, for bile duct cancer, I, I, this is a cancer that I've been treating for 40 years as a surgeon. Hmm. But if I can't cut it all out, those patients all die, okay? And that's because it's a cancer that's very resistant to chemotherapy and radiation. And uh, and that's why in our first phase one trial with uh, Vaccinia, two patients came on trial because in order to enter our trial, you had to have a bad cancer. You had to, had to have failed chemotherapy. And uh, that's the common scenario for this cancer. And what was surprising uh, that we found was that the first patient treated, the tumor completely disappeared. Okay. This is a patient with widespread disease that was not uh, responding to chemotherapy. And now even off therapy, all therapies for over a year, we don't find any growth. So it seems to be gone. Mm -hmm. Then the second patient treated, the disease completely froze and did not progress. Okay, That's why when we applied to the FDA, uh, when the imaging applied to the FDA, we got fast track destination. And that's why this new trial to do only uh, bile duct cancers in a particular trial to see whether we can actually get more of the same, meaning freezing the tumor or killing it completely and seeing whether we can actually bring this forward as an actual medicine for that disease. So <laughs> big year for you, uh, Leslie, uh, with all of this going on. Uh, every time we speak, there's a, there's a milestone to talk about. Uh, what What's next? Well, so we're going to continue to collect the data across the mass study, continue to dose bile tract cancer types in that study. Also with oncarolytics, we need to move up the dose, not only in IV, but also intratumorally as well in that combination. We'll continue to do that. And then, as you know, we have Azer cell, our, our blood cancer um, allogeneic CAR T that is progressing. And so all those things will culminate into a nice data set, um, hopefully uh, early preliminary data at the, by the end of this year. Leslie, Human, thanks for your time. Thank you for Thank having you. us.